I had to create a backdrop for a live virtual production set, which involved 3D scanning this awesome castle that NerdForge made with 30,000 individual foam bricks. That's a lot. I also had to make a wide angle, full CG establishing shot in Unreal Engine 5. So let's jump into how all of this was done. Full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Capturing Reality and this castle here was scanned using Reality Capture. Now I had the pleasure of collaborating with NerdForge and the team at Views, a film production company here in Norway that runs the Andiax YouTube channel. So a big shout out to them for making this collab possible. And it all started with this amazing handmade castle miniature. I mean, at this point, it's a bigature. It is huge. So the goal of this entire shoot was to place Martina in her own castle with the help of virtual production. In a studio, we had a huge beefy projector for the backdrop and we had Aaron here build a physical set piece to help Martina kind of blend into the backdrop a little bit better. And the first step of that process on my end was to scan the castle using photogrammetry to create a 3D model of it that I would then bring into Unreal Engine 5, which we could use as a backdrop on the wall at the back of the studio. If you want to learn more about the tech used for the virtual production side of things, go check out Andy Axe's video on this project right here or link below. You'll get a full behind the scenes breakdown of the entire shoot. For those of you who are new here, photogrammetry is the process of taking hundreds or even thousands of photos and using software like Reality Capture to align the images and create a 3D model with textures for us automatically. If you want a step-by-step -step tutorial about photogrammetry, you can watch my videos about that right here, links below. I'll hold your hand through the entire process. Using what we call a cross-polarized camera rig, that allowed me to cut out any ambient lighting and reflections, allowing me to capture the real albedo values of the model for texturing purposes. Not only that, but a cross-polarized camera rig will really help you get higher quality scan because shiny surfaces will deteriorate the quality of your 3D model. And now with the photos taken, I bring the images into Adobe Lightroom to adjust the images a tiny little bit for better processing, a little bit of sharpening, a little bit of white balance correction, that kind of thing. Export those images at JPEGs or TIFFs. From there, I can jump into Reality Capture, import those photos, align them very easily by clicking up here. And very shortly, you'll see the alignment turned out great. You can see exactly where I was standing when I shot each photo. The alignment process here gives us a visualization in the form of a point cloud, which shows us how things are going to look before we generate the 3D model. Every single image was aligned here, thankfully, and we should get a pretty clean model from this. You'll see I split up the castle into three parts to make each part a little bit easier to scan. Having lots of nooks and crannies makes things really difficult to get the right angle to shoot enough photos. So separating the parts of the castle will give me much better results. And from there, we can reassemble the 3D model together in Unreal Engine 5 later. It also gives us a bit more flexibility to adjust the exact positioning and the rotation and the height of each individual tower. So there are lots of advantages to splitting up the castle into different parts here. Now, because I know this data set is pretty good, I generated this mesh in high detail to squeeze out as much detail as possible from these photos. Usually I stick with normal detail, but because we'll be getting pretty close to the castle here, and it's going to be blown up on into a huge projector wall thing, I need this to hold up. But high detail generation takes way longer to process depending on how big your data set is and your PC specs. And because I had a deadline on this project, the shoot being on a Tuesday, and I took the photo just a few days before that, I ran into one snag. All right, so it's 2.30 in the morning, about six hours before the test shoot. I had three parts of this castle to scan, and two of them are done. I'm waiting for the last one here to finish. Uh, so far, the scan is turning out really well, but because my PC is using all of its resources to 
generate this model. I can't really do any work in Unreal right now. So until this scan is done, it doesn't really give me much time to make the surrounding environment in Unreal. Uh, so I, I, for sure I'll have time to put something together at the last minute, but due to the expedited nature of this shoot, I don't think the environment here is going to be my finest work. And it has to run in Unreal at 50 FPS. So uh, I hope people aren't too disappointed. So even though it took a while, the scan itself turned out so good. The work Martina did here is just absolutely awesome. I'm in love with all of the little details and imperfections and the sheer craftsmanship that went into this. I could model this castle from scratch in 3D, but it would never look the same. It reminds me of the work that Weta Workshop did on the Lord of the Rings with their own bigotures. Honestly, this is the kind of stuff I really want to do more of. That blend of practical and digital art is immensely satisfying. And if this is something you would like to see more of, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. So on set, we had three shots to do. A daytime sunset shot, a nighttime shot at another angle, and a wider over the shoulder shot. Like in any production, you run into some issues on set, things not working, you are on a tight schedule because tons of other people are involved and you don't want to waste your time. So sometimes you need to improvise and adjust things on the fly. This shot here, for example, I had a pretty sweet looking environment done with lots of lush trees and foliage. And for some reason, half of the environment would just not show up when we launched end display. So I had to make this shot here in about two minutes as a Hail Mary of sorts, just to have something that we could continue the shoot with. The whole project was more of a tech demo to see what we could do on a tight budget, but it was a whole lot of fun, even if the environment here in Unreal was not spectacular. With the shoot done, we still needed one more shot, a full CG pre-rendered wide angle establishing shot. But now at least I had more than a few hours to just spend on it, meaning I can render something out, max out those quality settings and deliver a gorgeous shot. So back into Unreal again, I quickly set up a camera. I established a rough landscape of the shot to make sure the framing was okay. Placed the castle. I added ultra dynamic sky to give it some lighting, added some water to make the shot more interesting. And then using Unreal Engine 5.2's new procedural tools, I scattered trees and bushes across the entire landscape. And just like that, most of the work is cut out for us. I've got a tutorial on this coming soon, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. You may have seen this tool in Epic's announcement videos. The PCG toolset is bonkers and a little bit complex and deserves a whole tutorial of its own, which is why I don't really want to half-ass it in this video. Whole ass one thing. From there, we can add some mountains in the background and more trees. It's worth noting that all of these trees all have Nanite enabled, which is how I'm able to get a somewhat respectable frame rate despite having almost 100,000 trees in the level. Whoa. The rest involves polishing things up, adding some rocks and fallen trees along the edge of the coastline here. And for a final touch, adding Easy Fog, which is a blueprint tool I made myself, which is for sale on the Epic Marketplace, link below. It's cheap and super easy to use and goes a long way toward adding a lot of mood and depth to your level. Using Easy Fog here allows us to really help the clouds and mist blend into the mountains over here on the left of the frame. And now we can render the shot. With this many trees in the scene, fine sub pixel detail becomes really important. So while my final output is going to be in 4K, I'm going to render this out at 8K using the screen percentage console variable, which will effectively super sample the image to get nice crisp details. Taking a look at the comparison here between the regular 4K version and the oversampled 8K version, we get more shadow detail. Everything is just a tiny bit sharper and cleaner. And the reason for that is because with default settings, Nanite does not render polygons that are smaller than a pixel. So by doubling your resolution, quadrupling your pixel count, you can render way more triangles, which ultimately gives you a lot more details. 
and better contact shadows in the distance. I'm giving away a render setting PDF for free with a clear explanation of my render settings. You'll even get a movie render cube preset file that you can add to your own Unreal project. These are the settings that I use for my own renders and it works like a charm every time. I'll be sure to keep that PDF and preset file updated as UE5 matures over time. Now, just be aware. When you're rendering this many trees in 8K, it's going to put a serious amount of strain on your workstation. You need a ton of VRAM, no way around it. VRAM usage scales with resolution. Fortunately, this is not a problem for NVIDIA's A6000, which has 48 gigs of VRAM. It's a beast of a card that can handle anything I throw at it. VRAM is gold and you can never have too much. If you have to choose between a faster GPU or a slower GPU with more VRAM, go with a card that has more VRAM every time. For example, NVIDIA's RTX 3060 is a better GPU for Unreal than the 3070, despite being a slower card, because it has more VRAM. I cannot stress the importance of VRAM enough. So, the last step is always a subtle color grading pass where I adjust contrast, halation, film grain, add lens distortion, lens flare, all of the good stuff for that last little bit of garnish. Again, if you want to see the whole sequence of shots, go check out Andy Axe's video right here, links below. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And as always, folks, happy rendering.